Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Amanda, and today we are going to be doing a little Q&A for my back to school series. I'm sorry this is so late. I'm literally late for everything. It's, it's a problem. I apologize. But we're still answering your questions, so hopefully they'll still help. Today's Q&A is going to be my first of three Q&As. This one is going to be my college Q&A. I'm also going to be doing a high school Q&A and a sorority Q&A. So today we're just going to start with college because I just, I feel like it. All of these Q&As are going to be going up pretty close together, so be sure to turn on post notifications and subscribe if you have not already. Join my lovely little family. You don't want to miss a Q&A because maybe I could be answering some of your burning questions, so... If you guys are not following me on Dote already, I am doing a bunch of back-to-school giveaways, three to be exact, and one of them has already started, and it's going for a few more days, so be sure to go and follow me on Dote and enter those giveaways. They're really useful stuff that I think you guys will like, very my style, and so I hope you like them. And if you're not following me on Instagram already, be sure to follow me at AmandaLouiseYT on there and join the lovely little fam. Let's get into this. So the first question that I feel like is a question maybe a lot of you have if you haven't been watching me for a while, where do I go to college? I go to the University of Connecticut. I'm going into my junior year. I absolutely love it at UConn. Go Huskies. And I just, I love it. It's the best. Go to UConn, guys. <laughs> Next question, pros and cons to on-campus and off-campus housing. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> I lived on campus in a dorm my freshman year, and my second year, I lived in an apartment off campus. Living on campus your freshman year, I think, is without a doubt the way to go. You are kind of forced into meeting new people. You have to pick a roommate. Um, I definitely recommend not picking someone that you already know, maybe, like, say, went to high school with or something, because I think that really restricts you from getting out there and, like, forcing yourself to meet new people. I mean, it is possible, but... I do recommend um, just going either random or finding someone. A lot of schools have like Facebook pages or a way like that to find a roommate through that. Um, that is what I did when I met my freshman roommate, Julia. I absolutely loved her. I got so lucky. She was amazing. And yeah, we just had a really good freshman year together. So I do not regret living on campus at all for my freshman year. And I would recommend it to everyone if possible because I really do think it helps you get yourself out there and really like get acquainted with the campus. And like I said, meet new people. Off campus housing. I loved living off campus in my apartment. I just really liked how I had, well, I lived in a duplex. So I had a kitchen, a living room, my own washer and dryer my own bedroom. Um, I just really like having my own space and own bathroom, own shower. That's a huge thing. <laughs> Community showers are not that fun. Not that fun. I did love living off campus. The dorms most of the time are not beautiful, super hygienic, lovely things to live in, but it is a good experience, I think, to have, um, especially your freshman year, like I said. But if you, you know, like I said, get acquainted with the campus, everything, I think living off campus is also a lots of fun. What's the best way to make college feel like home? This is kind of going back off of what I was saying before. Meet people, throw yourself in, um, so you kind of have, like, your home away from home. As soon as you make a friend group, you have people you hang out with all the time, I didn't get homesick. I mean, I still lived pretty close to home, but having those people there with you all the time kind of keeps your mind off of it. You have your people there and you have your people at home and making friends right away, throwing yourself into clubs, activities, um, Greek life is a really good way to make it feel like home because you have your own little family there and it just makes everything a lot easier. It's the best way to stay healthy in college. It is hard. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, most colleges have gyms so I definitely recommend going to the gym um, whenever you can it also helps you I feel like stay motivated in your classes and whatever because you just feel good it is kind of hard to eat healthy on a college campus I'm gonna be real with you they don't always have the healthiest options most of the time there's ice cream available literally whenever I don't know how I didn't have ice cream every single day that was some true self-control but they do have healthy options. You just have to look for them. Even if they're not, like, the best, I, like, always got grilled chicken. And it was always so dry, and everyone was like, how do you eat that? But, you, you know, you kind of got to make do what you have. So, there definitely are healthy options. You just kind of have to look for them. It might not be the easiest thing to do, but you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> what is something you try to do in order to stay focused on academics? My planner is such a huge factor in helping me stay on track and helping me stay focused. I write everything down in my planner so I can check everything off. I'm going to be having a planner giveaway, so also turn on your post notifications because I'm giving away one of my favorite planners 
ever and it's seriously oh my god it like it's a lifesaver you need it so turn on post notifications that will be coming soon and also follow me on instagram because you'll get another warning that it's coming on there so also when you're going into college obviously you're there for academics and everyone else is too whether they want to admit it or not social life is a huge thing in college but you need to know that your academics come before your social life and if you want to have a social life you really need to put your academics on a schedule so what i would do is set certain times for myself and let myself know what needed to be done at a certain time i knew i needed to get it done before a certain time if I wanted to go out that night or something like that. Basically, let your friends know it's your first priority, even if they're like, I'm not here for school. Huh? I'm going out even though I have an essay to write. Like, don't do that. You're going to stress yourself out and then you're not going to enjoy school. Like, you're really not. So if you are smart about it and plan things out um, wisely, then you'll be good to go. Do you make friends from college classes or does everyone kind of just do them? I wouldn't say that you necessarily make friends in classes. I personally have only made a few friends in like my discussion classes because um, they're smaller. UConn is a huge school so our lectures are gigantic like 300 plus people so you don't make friends really there. Everyone's just kind of there to learn. It's possible to make them in discussion sections like I said if you're like doing group activities and stuff but where I made most of my friends was living on campus, in my sorority, um, activities like that. That's where everyone's kind of like, everyone's there to make friends, basically. Like, that's what they're getting involved for, for the most part, especially like Greek life. Yeah, I wouldn't just rely on making friends in classes because most of the time people are just there to learn because they're paying for it, you know. Was the college application process hard? Honestly, it was like... I got a lot of questions asking if I had tips on like the college application process. I am not the right person to ask. I had such a hard time. Like me and my mom were like, what the heck do we do? Like we don't know what to do. My like high school guidance counselors were not that helpful. Really nice, but it wasn't, I mean, yeah, it wasn't that helpful. I like had no idea what I was doing. Definitely apply way ahead of time. If you can do early decision, I would kind of recommend that. That's what I did for a lot of my schools, especially if they're either rolling admissions because then you're like done. If you don't get your application looked at before they accept everyone, you don't have a chance. Do early admissions if you can or early decision. Get all of your stuff prepared ahead of time, like your essay and stuff. Some colleges want different essays, and but um, if you do the, I don't even remember what it's called. Like, the one application that works for a lot of them. Why can I, like, feel like this was 10 years ago? I don't know. Definitely don't leave it to the last second. Put your heart and soul into the essay. That's what I did anyway. I don't know if that's really necessary. But I feel like that's the best way they get to look at you. It's a lengthy process. I'm not going to lie to you. But you got to do it. So just get it done, girl. <laughs> what is the dorm life like? loaded question. Like I kind of said earlier, dorms, not beautiful, not a great place to live by any means. Your neighbors or the people that live above or below you might want to blast music until all hours of the night and you're trying to study or sleep, I don't know. Um, so that can be a little annoying. I would say get to know your RAs. I feel like they make a big difference. Maybe a lot of people don't agree with me, but if your RA likes you, I feel like that just like it helps the living, it just helps out with everything. You can go to them if you have a problem with something. If your neighbors below you won't shut up, they might go and tell them to shut up or talk to their RA. It's fun, but it can get annoying. Like if you have people that are loud on your hall and you don't want them to be all the time and I don't know, it's okay. It's, like I said, I would definitely recommend it for your freshman year. I don't know if I needed one more year of that. That's why I lived off campus, but um, it's definitely an experience, and I think everyone, if you can, should experience it. What things do I need to bring if I'm living in an apartment for college? It definitely depends on where you're living, what is included in it, because a lot of places come with furnishings, so you really just need, like, the things to live, like your essentials, like getting ready things, eating, stuff like that, you know? Other places might not come with anything, so you might need full furnishings. It honestly really depends on your location. I got lucky and, well, I mean, it came fully furnished, so I really only needed to bring decorations. I brought a little bit more than that, but my apartment came with literally everything, like silverware, refrigerator, toaster, microwave, literally everything. So definitely look into what it comes with um, because that'll help you out. And then go through your daily routine and see what you need that it doesn't come with. 
How do you manage time with school, work, relationships, and social time? Plan. Plan it out. It literally saves your life. I promise you. Like I said, school comes first. So plan out all of your things you have to get done right ahead of time every single due date for everything you have for every single class. So you have it out because you're not going to want to keep looking back at your syllabus. It's annoying. Write them all out. I would make a daily kind of like schedule. Let me show you. Hold on. So I recommend getting a like weekly planner and also a huge calendar to hang on your wall so it's screaming in your face what you need to get done. And a like regular planner. The planner that I have, you can design it however you like and you can even do like time increments so that's really helpful. You can like see what you have each time and see how much time you have in between. So if you give yourself a few hours each day to study, that really helps your studying before your exam. You can't leave until the last second. You'll fail. I'm just telling you now. Hello? I don't remember where I was. If you want to go out Thursday night and you have something to do Friday afternoon, don't leave it till Friday morning to finish it. You're gonna hate yourself. I promise you that. Get it done before you go out Thursday. If you don't get it done by Thursday night, you can't go out. I'm sorry. It's your mother telling you this, okay? Don't do it because you'll regret everything. Trust me. Social time and everything comes second. If you're in a relationship, they have to understand that you gotta focus on school or else they're probably not gonna want to be with you if you, you know, I don't know. If they care about you, they'll care about what you need to do. So, school comes first. Tell them I'm sorry. If you have a job, it's really, really helpful if you have a set schedule every single week. That is what has gotten me through school. If I had a job where it was random which days I was working each week, I think I'd probably have a heart attack and not be able to work. But my job is... I have a set schedule. I work two days a week. My boss knows that I'm in school and that school comes first. He has a son that's in school too, so he gets it, you know? Letting your employer know that you need to focus on school. You have an exam coming up. You're going to need to stay off or something like that. They understand. You're in school. They get it's a lot of money and they'll be okay with it. And if they're not, quit and find another job. <laughs> How do you study for quizzes, midterms, and finals? Study in advance. I'm telling you, it makes such a difference, I promise. And read the book. I know you don't want to read the book. No one wants to read the book, but it makes a difference, I promise you. What I like to do, and I'm trying to get better at it because I know it works and I need to, it, it just, it's not fun. Right after you get home from your class and you take notes in your class or whatever, rewrite your notes or make note cards into the notes so you have them to study for the exam. Then you won't be scrambling to get all the note cards done. By the time you write out 500 note cards, you're not gonna wanna study anymore. So as you do it gradually, really, 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 really helps. Trust me. And what I found has really helped me learning in classes is read the book that's assigned for that week or like the chapters that are assigned for that week before you go to that class because then when you go into class, it's kind of going to be like a review for you. Little hack. If you already read it, it's going to sound familiar when the professor is saying it back to you. If you just go to class and he's like scrambling off words, you're going to think he's speaking a different language and it's just not going to go over well. You're not going to absorb anything. But if you're looking at the book on your own time, you have time to be like, what does this mean? And it's kind of already explaining it, so really helps. Is it still possible to branch out and make new friends after freshman year dorm life? Absolutely. Getting involved in clubs and stuff, you can get involved whenever. It's such an easy way to make friends. And it's not like you just meet the people on your hall and that's it. Um, it does help meet people, but they're not like going to be your only friends, you know? You're going to go out and meet people all other places. So it's definitely possible. Don't get scared that it's not because it definitely is. Is college worth all the debt? In this day and age, I feel like it's really hard to get a job if you don't have a college degree, honestly, because they don't really, like, you know, they don't meet you. They kind of just see your resume, and if you don't have an education, they're probably not going to give you a second chance. And I hate to say that because it's, like, so unfair because not everyone can afford it and everything. I think it's really hard to go somewhere further in life if you don't have one these days. So I do think that it is worth it. Is college really that much harder than high school? Yes. <laughs> I got by in high school doing the bare minimum. Like, I was a straight A high honors student and I did nothing. 
I not I shouldn't say did nothing. I did all my homework and everything, but like studying wise, I'd look over some notes before my exam then like the night before I had it and I would pass with like an A. College is not like that. It's a lot harder. The information you're learning is much more complex. It's at like a whole nother level. Or maybe you can just don't play around. <laughs> For me, it is a lot harder. You have to put your heart and soul into everything you do if you want to do well. So they really want to like keep the people that really care about learning and kind of like weed the other ones out if you know what I mean. So it's hard. What are some things you think you, everyone should have to survive your freshman year? I made a video about this last year. I'm going to go ahead and link it up here for you guys because hopefully that'll help you. Do I have to pay for my own college? If so, are you worried about college debt? So my parents are helping me out um, while I'm in school. I still have student loans. They're not paying for the whole thing. And my senior year, I have to pay for my own school because I have twin brothers. And they're going to be in school at the same time for their freshman year. So my parents are like, yeah, no. I am worried about debt. <laughs> I sure am. But um, it's kind of just like something that comes along with it. And I'll pay it off eventually. <laughs> my friend's going to college soon and there will be so many things to study for her first year. How do you relax yourself? College is overwhelming. It is not a joke. It is hard work. And it is, especially your freshman year, very overwhelming because you're like not expecting it or I was not at least. So you just have to let yourself know that like if you fail one exam, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it does make a huge difference in your grade, but like it's a learning process. You have to kind of, I don't know, fail to understand what you're doing wrong and what you need to change for the next time. I know that sounds stupid and I hate that because I literally would have a mental breakdown in high school if I got below an A. And college is just not that way. So when I was not getting straight A's at first, I was like, what is happening? I can't take this. You just, you gotta push through and like take time for yourself too. You can't just study 24-7 and just not have a social life, not give yourself time, um, it makes a huge difference. You need to give yourself that little extra time because you'll go crazy if you don't. I've never taken any on-campus classes until now. What usually happens on the first day? So the first week is called Syllabus Week. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. Um, basically, I feel like everyone, maybe it's different in other schools. I feel like UConn doesn't really have a Syllabus Week. I might have had a Syllabus Week like my first week freshman year. After that, they kind of just jump right in. Um, but basically, so the first day of classes, they're going to start going over the syllabus, like what you're expected of in that class. They're going to give you the syllabus. Keep that thing close to you for life. You got to write all the things down, put them on your planner, put them on your calendar, put them in your phone. I don't know. Because they're not going to keep telling you things again once you get the syllabus. It's, it's all there. Everything you need to know is there. So... Don't ask them a question because they'll probably just tell you to check your syllabus. Yeah, first day of classes, they don't usually teach that much if they do. Um, a lot of them let you out early, which is nice. Occasionally. Occasionally. Don't, don't hold me to it because some are just crazy and they love learning. Yeah, the first week, I mean the second class, they're already into like learning things. So they don't give you much of a break, but the first day of class, they kind of let you know everything you need to know. What don't I like about UConn? Nothing, really. I really... The fact that my best friend and boyfriend graduated, that's what I don't like about UConn. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really love UConn. I don't think there's really anything that I don't like about it, to be completely honest. Keep you updated, but I don't think there is. Do I ever get homesick while I'm in college? I definitely did my freshman year. My family is relatively close by and I call my mom every single day. So, I mean, occasionally I'll get like a, oh, I miss my pets or something. But like the fact that I have my car now, it just makes it a lot easier because I can kind of go home whenever I really need to. But freshman year I didn't, so it was a little bit harder. Where are some places or where online can I buy cheaper books for school? One girl I work with told me about... Let me see if I can find it. Bigwords.com. So basically you put in the ISBN number. I think that's what it is. Yeah, the ISBN number. And it will pull up from every single search engine everywhere the cheapest that book is being sold. Definitely helps out because books are expensive as heck. And some of them, um, you can't get like different versions. Um, they need to be like a specific version. Or some of them, your school actually, like it's like 
say like a Yukon book so you can't really find it anywhere else which is annoying. Sometimes students sell them cheaper too. If you have like a buy or sell page, we do anyway, um, where students sell a lot of their books, which makes it a little bit easier. What is my major and what do I hope to do as a future job? So I am currently in the transition from an allied health sciences major to fashion merchandising. I know, quite the opposite end of the spectrum. I hope that my future job will be like a buyer for some company. I'd love that. Like a, st like a buyer for like a, you know, like a brand kind of, not brand, I'm losing it. A buyer is basically someone who like picks out like the items and trends and whatever that are showcased in a store for like that season, which basically is shopping with someone else's money, which is basically my dream. <laughs> so that's what I hope to do in the future. <laughs> Pick out your clothes in the stores before you get to. How do you get a 4.0 in college while also balancing having a social life? In the process of trying to figure that out, break the code, I'll let you know. <laughs> Is there a reason you don't drink alcohol? How do you handle that being in college? So basically, I just don't have any desire to drink. For those of you who don't know, I don't drink, have never drank. I just, I don't have any desire to. One of the reasons that I think I've like finally figured out with myself I hate not being in control of myself and I just, it scares me to not know what's gonna happen when I'm under the influence of alcohol. So that's one of the reasons I also, I'm just a rule follower to be completely honest and I'm not 21 yet. So there's, I'm not saying that I won't drink when I'm not 21. I don't think I'm gonna go out and be this crazy party girl, but um, I'm sure I'll try a sip or something when I turn 21. For right now, I'm just chilling. I can have a good time not on a substance. If you mean how do you handle that being in college, like that everyone else drinks, no one ever has like tried to force me into drinking. People obviously are like shocked that I don't and they'll ask me why, but most of the time people are just like, wow, I like props to you, I couldn't do that. It's not like embarrassing to me or anything. I just do my thing. Don't listen to peer pressure, kids, because you don't need to do it to have a good time. If you transfer from a junior college, would you recommend staying in dorms or an apartment? I think you mean being a junior in college? Honestly, that's hard. I don't know. A lot of people don't live in dorms when they're junior. I mean, you absolutely can, but I don't know many people that do it. If you really want to get to know people, maybe try living on a dorm because, like I said, that really helps. It is kind of just personal preference, I guess. I don't know. Living in a dorm does help you get to know people quicker. Fun dates for broke college students. Going on hikes, packing a picnic, and like going and sitting somewhere and watching the sunset, and eat your dinner. Even just like movie night on your couch or whatever, or if you're in a dorm, in your dorm. I don't know. Maybe Evan and I will try to make a video for that, because that'd be fun. I'll keep you updated. How do you stay on a budget? also working on that. I'm not the most frugal person I know, that's for sure. What three other colleges would you ever attend? If I were um, adventurous and moved far away from my family, which would never happen, but if I were, University of Georgia looks like so much fun. University of Alabama looks like so much fun. Somewhere in New York, something like that. I don't know. Either down south or like in New York, I would say. Like Fashion Institute of Technology. Do you get lost at UConn? I did when I first started there, and now it's like really easy to figure out where you're going. And people can help you if you have like a question, if you have no idea where you're going. But yeah, you get used to it really quick, so I wouldn't worry about that if that's like your main concern about going there because you learn the campus pretty quick. It's not as big as it seems once you're there. How to make your dorm look cute. Home Goods and TJ Maxx, baby. They have some cute little accessories that just brighten up your, like, lights. Get lights. Lots of lights because it just makes the place happier looking. Getting little frames and stuff and hanging like little inspirational quotes and you know throw blankets, pillows. They help a lot. How to avoid the freshman 15. I think drinking has a lot to do with it because I definitely did not eat like a saint my freshman year. I mean I, I kind of I don't really gain weight fast and I don't lose weight fast. I kind of just like stay how I am. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. Try to eat healthy the best you can. Don't eat junk food every single day. And drinking has a lot to do with it because I, I definitely felt more bloated, but I did not gain weight while I was in college. So I think that might be the key. Surviving a class you hate. 
push through girl i don't know it's hard it really is really hard i mean you can drop a course if you really just think you're not doing well in it but if you just hate it and you have to take it just try the best you can i know it's hard there's a light at the end of the tunnel it'll be over with soon what do you recommend bringing for your closets i always overpack girl same it is hard, especially in my freshman dorm. My closet was literally, like, I could barely fit my body into it. It was so tiny. They make things that um, hook on the top, like, rail of the closet and hang down so there's a lower section. That's what I had in my apartment, which really helped. And bringing, like, storage bins to put your clothes in, or, like, sometimes they come with, like, dressers or wardrobes or whatever. That's really helpful as well, but... You're not going to dress up every day, and I, I really had in my head that I was going to, but you just won't. So bring, like, a few pairs of leggings, a few pairs of jeans, a few pairs of shorts, some t-shirts, longer shirts, sweatshirts, maybe a few cute outfits because you just won't wear them all. Or, like, going out outfits, too, but, yeah. You're not going to wear heels. Don't bring the heels. It's comfy sneakers. Yeah. Is it hard not having Sam and Evan with you at college? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm like I obviously haven't gone back yet but I am just I'm not even excited for this year because I'm just like sad in my BFFs you know do you think it's good to be more involved on campus absolutely 110 percent that's how you're going to get the most out of your college experience and you're going to meet the most people and get involved you won't regret it I mean don't get over involved so you can't focus on school but do what you can because it makes a difference it really does What's a good way to finally figure out what I want to major in? Think about what you really love to do and what, like, excites you the most. You don't want to major in something that you just, like, is going to make good money or your parents want you to because you're going to be miserable for your entire life if you don't enjoy what you do. So that's why I kind of finally decided to do fashion merchandising. I always put it on the back burner. I was like... I love fashion, but not practical. That's what I know I'm going to be happy with for the rest of my life, like what I will enjoy doing forever. So sometimes you just need to put your happiness before anything else. And so really just like take some time, like do some like self-reflecting, like think about what you really love and how you can make it into a career. My parents always told me, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And that is something to live by. And I truly believe that it's the best way to go. I'm getting a lot of questions about like study tips and stuff, so I'm going to try to do a whole different video on that. Maybe that'll be more helpful so I don't have to like speed through it. So watch out for that. Is it weird to take a year break after high school and then go to college? I don't think so. I think it would definitely be harder to get back into like the whole studying thing again after you take like a break but I don't think it's a bad idea you don't want to waste money obviously if you have no idea what you want to go to school for I think college definitely helps you find that out pretty quick but because I don't I think if I took a year off I would have still thought I wanted to do ultrasound um but who knows I don't know so definitely taking a year off if you want to try to figure out what you want to do first I think that's completely fine what classes were hard for you biology and I had this one psychology course my professor was literally impossible oh my god if you go to UConn and you want to know who it is DM me don't ever take their class oh my lord it's ugh torture you couldn't do okay if you wanted to every single person I knew in that class didn't do well and then I took an honor psychology course the next semester and got an A plus in it. So like, no, don't take them. It's horrible. How do you overcome shyness or anxiety when living on campus and how do you make new friends? So the way I looked at it, because I have always been a pretty shy person, going to college is kind of like your fresh start. Um, if you're not going to like a school where all of your high school went to, no one really knows you. You can kind of be the person you always wanted to be, but you were too scared to be in high school. So all throughout high school, you're kind of growing up with those people, literally since the start. Like You literally grew up with them. So it's kind of hard to change and like be the person you want to be, I feel like, because they already have this expectation of you and like already know you. I don't know. It's weird. I don't... 
I don't know, but I feel like I've become a lot more outgoing since I've been in college. Make yourself the person you want to be. I know it's hard, like, you don't choose to be shy. Like, I totally get that. If you kind of, like, really just put yourself out there, like, push yourself, even though it's really hard, it will make a difference, and it makes it easier to come out of your shell once you do that because you have people around you supporting you and, like, who love you and, I don't know, just push yourself. I know it's really hard, but it makes a huge difference. College is hard and chaotic. How do you stay so positive and calm? I am definitely not all the time. I get very stressed out very easily um, because I want to be the best that I can and college doesn't always let you do that. So, like I said before, realize that if you do poorly on one thing, it's not the end of the world. If you spread out your assignments it makes it a lot easier and you won't be so stressed out and just give yourself some downtime like some you time to relax you study for a while take a few minutes to give yourself a break and reward yourself you know treat yourself honey that is my life motto treat yourself giving yourself some time and not trying to like rush everything and like push everything to the last second i am such a procrastinator and it's something i really need to work on and it makes a huge difference when you're not procrastinating the last second. Did your school have a welcome week? If so, was it worth participating in? So, me and my... Have I had that lipstick on my teeth the whole time? Good. Me and my freshman year roommate um, only participated in very few parts of welcome week. I feel like a lot of it is kind of just like name games and like I don't know I, I'm like I'm sounding like I'm putting it down and I don't mean to be we did fine without it um but I do recommend doing it I wish I did it just to kind of like see what it was see what it was all about I'm sure I would have met other people if I did it yeah so I guess I would do it if they have one did you find yourself more productive living on campus in the dorm or living alone in the apartment Definitely in my apartment, just because I had my own space, I could kind of do everything at my own speed, and like, I could just lock myself in my room alone if I really needed to, and I had my car, which was easier to like, go to the library or whatever if I really wanted to. That's just me personally. When do you recommend getting books during the summer or after classes start? So a lot of the time I recommend waiting until you go to the first class because the professor will tell you for sure if you really need the book. A lot of the times, even though they say they're like updated book lists, they're not. And then you buy a $300 book and then the professor's like, ha, you don't need it. And I'm like, I already bought it. Thank you very much. So I recommend waiting just because of that reason or sometimes they'll tell you that the book is like optional. Um, I still would recommend getting it if it's not like a $400 book, but for most classes, I would recommend waiting unless you hear from the professor beforehand. Did you ever struggle with what you wanted to major and do you wish you did a gap year? I kind of wish I did a gap year this year, to be completely honest, but I do just want to get college like done with. Um, just because I want to like really focus on like what I'm doing and like making sure that it's absolutely what I want to be doing and then I'd be able to put more time into YouTube, but um, yeah. So I don't think a gap year is a bad idea. Um, I think you know what's best for you. And if you think that's it, then I would say go ahead and do it. Alrighty, so that is going to be it for this Q&A video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe by clicking that button down below. And turn on notifications so you don't miss when I post my next videos. And if you're not following me on Instagram already, it is Amanda Louise YT. Be sure to go in, follow me on there, and join my lovely little family. And if you're not subscribed, click that button down below. I love you guys endlessly, and until the next video, don't forget to live lovely. Bye!